The following podcast is provided by Era Living, innovator in residential retirement options since 1987. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we have been talking with Era Living about senior living, about the lifestyle, about the connections that you make. But sometimes we don't talk enough about care. And what care really involves many times is a dealing with a pharmacy, dealing with uh, questions that you might have and different things like that. And so we're really excited to talk this week about a very unique partnership between Era Living and the University of Washington School of Pharmacy. And we have a wonderful guest by the name of Abby Winter. And Abby, you are a um, you're a teaching professor at the university. Abby, welcome. And tell us a little bit about you. Hi, yes. Thanks for having me. Again, my name is Abby Winter. I'm a pharmacist and a um, teaching professor at the University of Washington School of Pharmacy, where I work primarily in geriatrics. Mm -hmm. um, I also have some specialty in diabetes, um, but I also work with Era Living and do a lot of outreach there, um, helping bring our students there for some learning opportunities, but also enhancing mm -hmm. the lives of the residents at Era Living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, there's so many amazing partnerships that, that Era Living has with the University of Washington. And I think that's something that really intrigues me. It intrigues me in so many ways that it really allows people to get the forefront of care when needed or in, you know, any sort of situations where they might have questions about what they can deal with. So tell us a little bit, you are um, working for an organization, it's uh, called the Pline Center for Geriatric Pharmacy. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so the Pine Center is part of the uh, Department of Pharmacy at the school, and mm -hmm. um, it was established from a lovely endowment from um, Joy and Elmer Pine, um, and they are were really passionate about the care of older adults and medication management, mm -hmm. and they wanted to make sure that that legacy lived on. So mm -hmm. the Pine Center, um, where I serve as the Assistant Director for Outreach, uh, we work on research, education, and outreach to help um, really... Uh, optimize older adults' medication use in many ways by working mm -hmm. directly with older adults, working with their caregivers, working with um, healthcare providers, uh, mm -hmm. and also kind of being at the forefront, working in research sure. in the bench and researched mm -hmm. also at the bedside. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I can go back to my own story of taking care of my, my own mom. And I remember there were times when she would take a medication and she'd get real sweaty or she would have some reaction. I'm assuming, you know, you, sometimes you think maybe it's just their their health is deep, you know, is as they're declining, um, or it could be medication, but how, that's, that's something obviously that you're a great resource to help yeah. with. Yeah. Um, one thing that our relationship provides the residents at Era Living mm -hmm. is these one-on-one -on -one consultation possibilities to just wow. have an expert go through your medications to make sure everything gets along or uh -huh. make sure that they're not having one, some side effect that they don't realize is a medication side effect. Sure. You know, a lot of times we think of different symptoms of um, you know, it might just be getting older, but mm -hmm. that's not always the case. Maybe it's a medication causing that side effect and pharmacists right. are really well suited to find those possible interactions or side effects. And as we get older, medications work differently in our bodies. So sometimes Dude. something that worked well for you 10, 20 years ago that you've been completely fine on doesn't work so well anymore, or mm -hmm. now it causes you a side effect. So, mm -hmm. um, being kind of an expert in geriatrics helps me to better find those things. Um, sure. Sure. Yeah. And obviously those with, you know, th there's another side of it, which is, are you getting proper hydration when you're, when you're taking medication and things like that? I'm sure you've kind of helped in that realm as well. Yeah. There's a lot of various lifestyle things that go along with medications. You know, people mm -hmm. often think, oh, you're the pharmacist, you're going to add medicines or you only want me to take them. But honestly, as folks get older, especially one of the biggest things that pharmacists do is what we call de-prescribe mm -hmm. or try to find medicines that aren't warranted anymore. Right, get rid right. of some of that pill burden whenever we can. Sure, um, sure. But additionally, there's a lot of lifestyle things that help medicines work better or um, maybe replace the need for mm -hmm. some medications. And 
Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be the one making those changes. Mm -hmm. I kind of help residents um, empower them with knowledge so that they feel more comfortable talking to their providers about this. Absolutely. Well, and Abby, what you're saying too, I think of if a senior lives independently, they can go visit a pharmacist, but they're, if they're in assisted living, um, that you know, that is done through air living and then they provide the medication. So you really miss out on that connection with the pharmacist. So this is really what you're providing as is that, do, do I have it right? Yeah. And, um, when medications are provided through medication mm-hmm. assistance with air living, they do go through a pharmacy and have that, um, the check that all medicines do, but mm-hmm. they might not, residents might not have that face-to-face with the pharmacist to ask those mm-hmm. questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is an opportunity to kind of mm-hmm. add in that extra touch. Yeah. yeah. And so you um, visit the various elder air living communities. What is your role when you come to a community? Yeah, great question. So it's kind of multifaceted and it's um, ebbed and flowed over the years. Um, but uh, as it stands, I help primarily with outreach for the Pline Center. So that means educating older adults, but also educating their caregivers or the staff at Era Living. Um, But primarily when working with the older adults, we will um, provide talks or lectures about various topics that are often ideas presented by residents. Um, We also will uh, bring students to the communities at times to sort of help us with some of our screenings and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, right now we're doing um, a campaign of health promotion days. So we've had like a diabetes day, a brain health day, a heart oh, that's health day, wonderful. Um, and provide things like blood sugar checks and blood pressure checks, osteoporosis screenings, diabetes screenings. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's another really cool opportunity. And we pair that kind of with a lecture as well, mm-hmm. since people learn in different ways. Um, mm-hmm. And then additionally, those one-on-one consultations are always available whenever residents are interested. Mm -hmm. Um, But as part of the Pine Center, we also focus on research whenever possible and encouraging our students to do research. So a new service has developed as um, a result of a research project recently that a student of mine was doing uh, where we're reviewing um, older adults' medications in their homes for expired products or unused products and helping them know how and where to dispose of them safely um, just to make sure that you don't like take the wrong drug accidentally, or maybe Mm -hmm. you had something left over or your dose changed and you kept the old dose with you. You don't want to take the wrong one. Um, and to keep in case grandkids or pets are around, keep them safe too. Um, but it's, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities for, um, engagement and interaction with the pharmacist as a resident at Era Living. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like, it's that overall um, community of care. And I remember early in the times when we first started talking to Era Living, there's a lot of things about how you guys all work as a team. It's a community and you're just a piece of that, but you are connected to something so much greater. And I think that is really cool. Now you do obviously have special events or different types of things that you were talking about. You did the diabetes day and all that stuff. Tell us a little bit about what goes on with those events. Yeah. So, um, I'll use bone health day as an example. Um, so Uh for a few hours in the morning in the lobby or something like that, Mm -hmm. or a living room, depending on the community, Mm -hmm. we'll have an informational booth up with, um, a poster, some handouts and flyers to take with you. Um, On Bone Health Day, we provided um, bone density screening. So folks could come in and actually get um, a real DEXA scan, um, Mm -hmm. which kind of helps them know if they need to talk to their doctor about their uh, potential for osteoporosis or things Mm -hmm. like that. Um, And uh, always providing the ask a pharmacist option where uh, folks can just bring their medication list or simple questions that they might have. And then later in the day, we offer a... um, a lecture or a presentation, um, more mm-hmm. focused, um, goes into a little more detail. And mm-hmm. then uh, as available, depending on the community, we'll also offer staff education. So kind of nice. incorporating all of these services into one day, um, but also knowing that we're available um, any other time as well mm-hmm. to schedule opportunities to interact. Mm-hmm. With yeah. Customers. And so obviously when you, when somebody comes into an era living community, how do you get connected with that individual? 
Yeah, great question. So there's a couple of ways. If they are um, part of the assisted living uh, medication management Mm -hmm. portion of the services provided, then they already have some connection to the pharmacists that fill medications. Um, But the staff in the wellness center also know that I'm available uh, for questions that they might have. And they often Mm -hmm. will reach out or have us look through something if a resident has a new symptom that they can't figure Mm -hmm. out where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, And then a resident who's maybe more on the independent living side, um, not using the medication management services, um, are the pharmacy services are, um, uh, uh, shown about the community the same way that any other services are with. Like, oh, okay. So, so yeah, they so can, they, they could actually, or yeah, they could order their own, um, medications in through yours, even if they're, um, uh, you know, or there's your service, even though they're independent, they can ask you questions. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. And I think something that's really important to note is everything provided through our partnership is completely free to the residents at Arrow. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. And obviously, um, just to have that sounding board, especially I would say for a spouse, um, maybe they went to a doctor, a doctor subscribed a new medication prescribed. You don't necessarily know, you know, what this is supposed to do, how it's supposed to work. This is a wonderful resource for the residents that are in your communities. And I, uh, I'm, I'm just interesting too, as far as you're, you're kind of a watchdog too. I would imagine too, when you're evaluating, you know, there's some medications that maybe they got medication from one doctor and the other doctor doesn't know that they're taking another medication. I mean, are you finding sometimes that there's some incompatibilities that can cause side effects? Yeah, that's definitely a thing that we find often. Um, So not only just a medication on its own Mm -hmm. potentially causing issue, but sometimes prescribers don't know what another prescriber is doing. Um, You know, there are a lot of efforts right now to try to combine that care and be mm-hmm. able to access it. But, you know, we all know what the healthcare system is a little bit broken right yeah. now. And it's hard yeah. sometimes to, yeah. to really well, see that. Yeah. And I think the other side of it is I know my mother was in um, palliative care mm-hmm. and I kept saying, you know, why is she getting all these medications? And if I would have had somebody like you that I could call up and say, you know, I'm concerned about my mom and you would be able to explain why, because palliative care is a different level of care. And so obviously to understand those pieces, I would have lost, you know, not lost so many nights of sleep because I didn't understand at the time what that was. And I think that's a lot of what families do. They don't understand about why certain, you know, medications they're taking, how that works, what happens. So, wow, what an amazing um, service that you guys provide to era living that's awesome so abby thank you so much for being a part of this podcast series and i know that this is a really valuable program for era living so thanks for being with us of course thanks so much for having me Era Living is locally owned and operates eight premier retirement communities in Seattle, Renton, Mercer Island, Bellevue, and Issaquah. From vibrant, independent living to compassionate assisted living to secure memory care, Era Living respects and honors older adults by enhancing the quality of their lives. Learn more at eraliving.com.